So what I'm going to tie today is a blue winged olive nymph. And the reason that I like this fly so much is because of this fella. This was a sample of a fly that we pulled out of the River Meon uh, while we were doing some river fly monitoring a couple of years ago. Isn't it a fantastic looking little creature? Um, and to me, this is kind of one of the things that's inspired the way that I tie a lot of the nymphs that I use um, for various different kinds of nymph fishing. Um, so let's just have a quick whiz back to the vise and see where we're going. So let's just run through the materials, how to tie the black bishop. In the vise, I have a Hanak 450 BL, um, a jig hook uh, in size 16, barbless hook. We've got a three and a half millimeter anodized black tungsten bead. This is um, a fish on. Um, tungsten bead um, so quite a big bead actually for the size of the hook I wouldn't normally put a size uh, three and a half mil on a size 16 but one of the great things about these hooks is they're quite wide gape so the distance between the hook point and the shank of the hook itself is quite a decent distance so it does allow you to get away with using a slightly larger tungsten bead which obviously gets the fly down in the water column a little bit faster also, the actual insect itself, if you look at that little nymph, the video that uh, showed you at the start of this, he's quite a chunky fella, so actually having a larger bead's a, a real bonus. Um, the tying thread, uh, which will also form the body, is a Techstream Ato Standard Black. Uh, I'm going to be using some Coq de Leon feather for the tail, which has got those lovely bar um, colorations, dark and light, just like the real insect. Uh, we're going to be using some holographic tinsel for a pearly coloured back end. Uh, this is in purple and that's one of the main reasons that this fly is called the Black Bishop because uh, Bishop has purple on his robes or her robes and um, this uh, coloration just kind of suited the purpose. So it's uh, one that we invented to fish on the Meon and it's really, really caught on. It's a terrific fly, catches lots of fish um, and uh, was worthy of the name some silver wire for a rib, just extra fine silver wire. I'm going to use a little bit of um, CDC feather to form uh, a kind of a, a bit of a wing and then some of this stuff to finish it off which is the hairline um, eye stub UV calibatis which is that lovely kind of UV uh, translucent colour. So let's go on with the tie. Um, I'm going to put on some thread first of all just a decent kind of bed to get everything going. As I say, this thread is what forms the body of the fly, so it's not got a dubbed body like an awful lot of the nymphs that we fish with. Uh, the black thread forms the, uh, the body, so you're trying to build up a little cone here just to kind of secure the tungsten bead in place so it doesn't slip. The materials will hold it in place as we go, but I just want to keep it there so it doesn't keep sliding down the hook. So. Nice little layer of thread just back from the point. You can see um, just a, a kind of three or four millimetres back from the point. I'm then going to grab my Coq de Leon feather and I'm going to pinch off three strands just like the tail on the real insect. In fact, I've only managed to get two there, so I'm best grab another one. Just really love the way this material forms tails on these little nymphs. It's a terrific material to tie with. Really neat and tidy. In fact, I've got four strands now, not to worry. That will do nicely. Quite a decent length of tail, not too long, but it just kind of, the real insect, it's quite a, a sort of a decent length of tail there. Um, one thing I'm going to do, just to make this pop a wee bit, is to take a loop of thread underneath and just pull it gently up and it just kind of splits the tail a wee bit and lifts it up from the body of the hook. I'm going to grab, just trim off those ends of feather. And you'll probably notice that they just popped into the slot on the hook there, which just helps to hold the, uh, the bead in place again. Um, next thing that's going on is my holographic tinsel. So just trim off a, a little length of the holographic, about a couple of inches, 
again introduce it and shorten it down just so it's all nice and neat and tidy catch it in all the way to the end just don't want to go too far and squash the tail feathers down back up with your tying thread and I'm going to use my hackle pliers just to give me a nice neat turn on this because I don't want to squash those tail fibers down you can see they're splitting nicely now so I'm going to do three or four turns nice and tightly together and then once you've got a decent coloration on that back end you can widen out the, the, um, the turns up the rest of the body and then secure it down with a few more turns of tying thread next part of the process is to grab some silver fine silver wire for the rib on this fly and then I'm just going to form my body so once I've got all those materials in I'm just going to go all the way down to the end and stop with about three or four mil of that purple holographic still showing. And then I'm going to go back up with my tying thread just to form that black body, covering up all of the purple. Nice taper here, so you've got that nice little cone shape like a natural insect. And then I'm just going to bring my rib up in one, two, three, four, five neat turns. and just tie off with my tying thread. Just pinch it all down so you get a nice neat little rib. I use an old pair of scissors just to trim the wire off and just make sure everything's nicely secured. Okay, just straighten that up a little bit. It's just come down a wee bit. So next part of the process, a little bit of UV resin just to secure everything down even further. Um, protect the fly from bouncing along the bottom of the river and being attacked by fish. Don't want too much of this resin, but again, this will just help secure everything in place. Put the lid back on the resin before I knock it over. UV torch, give it a cure. Just take care not to put uh, resin on those tail fibers again because they'll suck it up and they'll become nasty and sticky. So, once that's cured, maybe takes 10 seconds or so, next part of the process. And that's to grab myself a CDC feather, nothing too big. I'm just going to grab that feather, take a couple of the longer fronds out, I don't want them too long, and just brush it forward so that they're standing out at kind of 90 degrees from the, the stem of the feather. And then I'm going to grab a bulldog clip, which has got a tapered end, like so, pinch the uh, ends together, grab a slightly longer pair of scissors, and just give that a trim. What you're left with is just the very ends of those bits of feather sort of poking out from the, the end of the bulldog clip. Pop that down for a second. And I'm going to grab this device. So this is uh, actually a dubbing needle which has got a serrated end on. It's designed for kind of picking out dubbing, but it's also really useful for splitting threads. So I'm just going to drag that serrated end across my, tying, my flat tying thread. And all it does is it just separates those multi-strand fibres a little bit gives me the opportunity to get in there and split the thread open without breaking it. And I've got kind of two strands. And then all I can do is just introduce the bulldog clip in between the two strands, pull it off the end so it kind of clips those little feathers in between it, like so. Just straighten them out a wee bit and shift them up. And then what I should be able to do is shorten my thread down, give it a little bit of a spin, 
and then when I let go with my finger and thumb it just twists the thread a wee bit and just secures everything in so just wind that round just to form a little bit of a I suppose it's a wing case isn't it just kicks those feathers backwards and gives you a little bit of movement in that fly actually not happy with that so I'm going to do it again I'm going to use a slightly larger feather I think one didn't work all that well it does happen sometimes no dramas just grab another piece of CDC perhaps one with slightly more robust feathers maybe a bit of a bigger one there we go that's a bit better so a bit more like that and then I'm just going to grab my clip you can dictate the length of the feather fibers by how far away from the stem you clip it there you go that's much neater so there's our CDC same routine then grab the dubbing needle scrape it across use the other end to open things up a wee bit introduce those fibers and just pinch them down using the thread yeah, that's going to be much better much happier with that just spread those out a little bit so they're a bit neater and give my bobbin a spin and then it's almost like a dubbing rope isn't it just keep brushing them back and you can see what's happening is they're kind of splaying off in all directions which is kind of what I want um, I want them all pointing backwards but just kind of longer ones and shorter ones and you get that lovely feeling of life from this tiny little nymph really terrific the other thing that happens is that little air bubbles get trapped in these fibers so when this tiny little fly is jigging around in the water it actually looks like a real nymph that's emerging through the water column okay last bit of the tie then so um, all I'm going to do now is introduce the dubbing collar the calibatis so just a little pinch it's an artificial fibre and it's quite brittle so it's not particularly nice to dub with but it is worth it for the result you get. You have to try to get quite a tight little dubbing rope like so. That should do us and just keep it nice and tidy at the head of the fly like so and then a whip finish. Him off. So there it is, the Black Bishop. A fantastic fly that you can use in any of the various types of nymphing techniques, whether that's Spanish, French, Euro nymphing, Czech nymphing, whatever you call it. Terrific as a point fly uh, in a team, great on its own, um, just as a single nymph cast into tiny pools and bounced around. The wild trout love it. It's a useful pattern for grayling in the winter too. Really fantastic feature about this. I've, I've had quite a lot of success with it in clear water, um, very shallow, fast flowing stuff. But because of the black profile, one of the best bits about this fly is it's also really, really good in coloured water when you're looking for a fly that kind of just stands out in, in that sort of muddy coloured stuff. In fact, use this on the River Ebu in Wales um, in the International a few years ago. And it was really, really effective, particularly in the practice sessions. So uh, a really useful fly to have in your box. Um, here's a little reminder of the materials you need to tie it. I um, hope if you do have a go um, that you get some success with it. The very best of luck. I um, uh, hope you've enjoyed watching the tie. hope you enjoyed tying it. And I hope you catch plenty of fish with it. Thanks ever so much for watching. <laughs>